Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast. I know it's been a long time. We got the homie Rob G, the producer Rob in the building. What's up, everyone? And Rob hit me up with a very interesting idea. Rob, do you want to help contextualize? Yeah, I can start off by saying I'm, I can see I got Marisol's uh, microphone because it's got all the lipstick all over it. Dried up lipstick. Sorry, <laughs> man. I didn't have time to switch up. No, it's everything. all good. Uh, yeah, I just noticed that on social media you were you were being a little bit more vocal about certain standpoints, mm-hmm. how you, like certain ways that you stand with things like let's just say your faith, defunding police, defunding police, your political views. The election was around the corner, and I kind of just stood back and thought, you know, there's some really interesting things that could be said to a platform of this size. And I just hit you up and I was like, hey, have you ever thought about maybe expanding upon them on your platform? Well, you're the man for the job, man, because I know you're gonna uh, be able to parse out. And, and and help uh, help really what I'm trying to do, man. I think my goal is to continue the discussion yeah. that that I feel like we are finally creating. Because from my point of view, our strategy as a Latino community in politics has always been this. Our strategy is this: we gotta vote Democrat. We gotta vote Democrat. Hey, los Democratas. Hey, Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. I don't know how. I don't know if this was for sixty years, thirty years, or a hundred years. And I'm also not an expert in terms of like, well, Chingo, look at how much progress we've made. You know, there was a time where Mexicans couldn't, or Mexican Americans couldn't drink from the same fountain, and there was a time when, you know, we were being lynched or something or other, right? Or just really discriminated. So, as you were saying. Uh, I started being a little bit more vocal on Twitter. Yeah. On Twitter, that's my that's like my smallest platform. I have like around 50,000 followers on there. And I love the discussion. And um, and that's really what I did, man. I went on live on Periscope. I did a two and a half hour discussion with a handful of my politically oriented fans. And I was just talking just like this, just being myself, riffing, talking shit. I even at one point walked over and put on a mariachi hat because yeah. I was I was saying how Joe Biden's campaign is like, we're going to play Despacito, we're going to uh, book some mariachis, and we're going to get a couple Latin celebrities involved, and we're good. We ain't got to promise them shit. We ain't got to leverage, you know, there's no negotiation, there's no contract with Brown America, there's really no accountability. It's just more of the same, same strategy, business as usual, you know what I mean? So after my per- my Periscope went live, I went back inside the house. Mind you, it was a two and a half hour periscope. <laughs> my wife is like, hey, sorry, I couldn't help you back there. You know, maybe to like ask questions or guide you in case something was unclear or something sounded weird. But how'd it go? I was like, I think it went great. I was being myself. I was being honest. I think I was persuasive. I was talking to my people the way I talk. She was like, OK, but you didn't say nothing that could be taken out of context. Right. And I was like, um, I don't think anybody's going to go and take the time to parse out little nine ten second little bits and pieces where it might sound a little weird if you take the context out and that's literally what these cats did uh these little cats from kansas um got some info on them boys you know what i'm talking about yeah so there's the same way you have shade room and world star and right. like these click baity tmz you know there's money in that shit these days there's clout Puro chisme. there's clout yeah cheese man yeah. so basically they took it upon themselves to be like mira Chingo Bling hates immigrants and he's anti rasa and he voted for a Nazi and he's a Hitler now. Chingo's a little Hitler. He's a little brown Hitler, basically, right? Because yeah. that's what people think. Uh, some people, you know, they think Trump is Hitler, orange Hitler and anybody that supports him is a Nazi, a self hating Nazi. So before case. you get into these people, though, actually, to give the listeners a little mm-hmm. bit more context, what made you do that periscope? I meant to ask you that myself. Yeah, so, so basically, as you were seeing, Ice Cube was catching some heat. I think at that point, I don't know if Little Pump. Had been like, yo, fuck Sleepy Joe yeah. or anything like that. Kanye had already caught a gang of arrows. 50 Cent caught a lot of arrows. It, it got to the point to, with 50, that white liberal women like Chelsea hmm. had to remind him They're that you're black. black and you're not a grown fool man that can think for himself. Basically, stay in line, comply, shut the hell up. And you know me, I'm one of them people, man, that I've always, I've been blackballed since I entered the game. Yeah. And um, I'm not one to comply. <laughs> so I, I think that was the day Lil Wayne posted the picture where Trump was like, hey, believe it or not, I feel like this dude's going to do a lot more for the black community. And, and he took a chance. And I don't know, everyone's like, they paid him and he must be in tax problems. And yeah. people his color were trying to cancel him, right? 
And that's kind of what put the battery in my back. I was like, oh, okay, man, like it might be safe. You know, yeah. the, the coast is clear. <laughs> I wanted to add my little two cents. And I really just hinted towards it. When I, in my two and a half hour Periscope, I was just like, I was kind of just saying how I wasn't a fan of uh, Biden. I was also saying how a lot of the stuff they say about Trump really isn't true. He did not say drink bleach. I started to attempt to uh, debunk some of these hoaxes. Nice. Like, like, what would you do if I told you that he really didn't say there were fine people on both sides? Right. He really didn't say the Nazis were fine people. Like, if you look at the transcript, that's what I was trying to do is educate <clears throat> and start a conversation and a discussion that's needed to ha be had because for the longest it's been a one-sided discussion it's only been we have one option our strategy i feel like our brown leaders our leaders in our community let us down mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is poor strategy not once have i heard I'm, i don't want to start calling out names but like Latino leaders, if sure. you will, be like, hey, um, you know, we, we're not 100 percent sold on what kind of like what Ice Cube did. We're not 100 percent sold on what the Democrats are telling us, but we're waiting on this meeting with the Republicans to see where we're going to take our Latino vote. In my opinion, that's a lot wiser, even if you're bluffing. <clears throat> it's a lot wiser to go about it that way than to just give the Democrats a monopoly on on our vote right. right i just feel like it's poor strategy anyway uh within that two and a half hour um periscope i just hinted towards voting for trump i was like man this lady pulled up next to me and this big truck drove by with the big flags and the trump flag and she just looked at me like mm, mm -mm. <laughs> kind of like look at these fucking kkk yeah walking around all emboldened right i don't believe that i don't subscribe to the idea that if you wear an american flag you're a Hitler, Nazi, KKK, you ready to lynch somebody. I do not subscribe to that idea. Um, I feel like I'm wise enough to know that there's no way all these people that are supporting this man, you know, really, I just see a whole bunch of peace and love and patriotism, you know, especially that million MAGA march. And yeah. Obviously, somebody's going to be like, well, on CNN, I saw, you know, the Proud Boys, you know, because the Proud Boys is, you know, that's a whole nother subject. That's that's for next episode. But anyway, I just basically hinted, you know, the lady honked. I mean, the lady uh, looked at me like, look at these idiots. And and I and in the periscope, I said, shit, I looked at it like, bitch, four more years. Bitch. <laughs> and that's all it took for all these little pages to be like, orale, you turn your back on the raza. Ultimately, Rob, what I've found is that when you're ready to grow and evolve, you can't take everybody with you. Right. Not everybody is mentally there. Just like in school, let's just say. You want to um, wear a different type of jeans or you want to wear that kind of jacket. You want to shop at that store. People going to be like, what do you think you're white? I say you forgot about the raza. Or you want to switch schools. Let's say you go to a hood middle school and in ninth grade you transfer to like a different district where mm -hmm. you're going to get a better education. Now you got a better chance of going to college and more activities and different resources and the teachers are better. So on. They're going to call you a sellout. Oh, you over there studying. So it's basically I'm getting rid of a lot of those closed minded people. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that a lot of people are just confused, hurt, don't understand because they still believe the news. Yeah. Again, I don't. <laughs> right. So I have to remind myself that people view the world through different filters than I do. And not everybody's caught up to speed. They're not all on the same page. So hopefully <clears throat> with this series, I might have to get me a little water or something. Hopefully with this series. Oh, here, it's not even open. Take it. Oh, thank you, dog. Uh, there's beer and sodas and shit. <laughs> like a good host. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to take your water here now. Uh, so it's safe to say that one of the big parts of why you're pursuing this angle or this this top these topics is because you do want to open a discussion and you want to have more people, you know, you want to put them on game about how to actually go out and find the sources and find the information and not just take the mainstream, which, as we all know, is probably the least trustworthy media or outlet that you could trust is the main, mainstream media. Then you have independent media, which this would kind of be an independent mm -hmm. media, especially if you're talking about these kind of subjects. Mm -hmm. And then you have the actual papers and the documents, as Alex Jones would say, I have mm -hmm. the documents. Yeah. Go out there and actually find the information instead of just taking anybody's word for it. Yours included, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, you and might I, go find it and find something else. I aim to be the one of the most credible voices in all of this. And what I mean by credible is that when the smoke clears, you're going to look back. I'm talking to the listener. You're going to look back and be like, 
hmm, I didn't understand him at first, but Chingo tried to warn us. Mm -hmm. He told us that this defund the police thing sounds cool on the surface, but there's a shadow agenda behind it. And he broke down how it's really going to adversely affect the barrio, the hood, impoverished communities, how it's really going to backfire. Mm -hmm. And it really just comes with another agenda. A lot of this stuff, the climate, the whole climate control, green, what is it, Green New green Deal, deal yeah. the Paris Climate Accord, and we need to make windmills and all this. I can, We can do a whole episode just about that because a lot of people, shit just sounds good. It's yeah. like, well, Joe Biden cares about science. It's like, okay, if I wanted to manipulate and be, I'm not saying he's an authoritarian or he wants to be a totalitarian dictator, nothing like that. <clears throat> but hypothetically speaking, if I wanted power, all I really will have to do is pay off a couple scientists, you know what I'm saying, or control the CDC or have some influence at the World Health Organization, and then I'm going to force all you motherfuckers. Bitch, you better believe in science, ho. Science says take your ass inside the house at 10 p.m., bitch. Science says wear your motherfucking mask. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not arguing that masks work or they don't work. Uh, obviously, they got to work somewhat, right? But they've also found that places that are real good about mask wearing still get the same amount of cases. So that's a whole nother episode. But my point is, is that a lot of times people manipulate these little words and meanings like data. We need a, we need a president that cares and he's a father figure. And now because of Kamala, I feel that anything is possible. Thank you, Kamala. I had no idea that anything was possible because they've trained us to look to look at the world through the filter of race and color and uh there's some shit called uh critical theory mm -hmm. we could do a whole episode about yeah, that critical race theory critical race theory wants to promote i put this shit on twitter i said a lot of our latino leaders are promoting this colon latino male is oppressed latino female is even more oppressed latino gay female is even more and more oppressed than the other two. So she's winning at the oppressed Olympics. And this critical theory shit, it's really just division along the lines of gender. It's almost like separating the the, the couple, the man and the woman. Like it's like, no, no girl, mm -mm, girl, you don't need no man. It's feminism, it's girl power. It's like, well, you kind of do need a man for some things. Like right. how are you gonna multiply and have a family and you know, you know, without getting too scientific, but if you go back millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of years, all this stuff is kind of ingrained in our DNA that, you, you know, birds chirp because they're trying to mate. Right. You know, lobsters at the bottom of the ocean scavenging for food. Well, there's there's territory and they're trying to mate too. The females wait till they soften up and the shell comes off and now they're attracted to the, the alpha lobster who just whooped another lobster's ass and, and now they kind of you know multiplying and they're getting together and anyway that shit probably didn't make no sense but my point is is all these new cultural structures a lot of times there's just a shadow agenda behind it like if you're a religious christian person or a faith you know you believe in god and, and the bible it it might sound weird to you that it's like you don't need a man girl power you know like my wife she's always like i never got into the whole bashing men thing right she's like yeah i think it's cool that you know women are powerful and we're capable of doing all kinds of shit but you still need a man yeah like don't disrespect the man right and don't let the family dissolve all because some politicians have a, another agenda but um uh, but yeah anyway i know i'm jumping all around but overall we want to just kind of have the discussion educate and get people talking more about it because I already caught all the heat. I already caught all the arrows. So now it's okay to have right. the discussion. Yeah. And that's what a leader does. A artist and a good leader doesn't want to be predictable. Um, they're going to go with what they feel is, is, is righteous and truthful and is from the heart. And I'm that type of person. Like I'm not going to fucking sugarcoat. If I need to give you, if I feel like I'm giving you some good game or if I'm putting you up on game, and I'm giving you some medicine that you need, then I, that's what I'm going to do. I'll sacrifice a percentage of my fan base because I feel like apparently I kind of needed to. Yeah. Um, because like I said, not everybody can evolve with you. And, and, and 
you know, but anyway. Go well, on. you would, you, you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's kind of like it's for the greater good, right? Because mm-hmm. as you're mm-hmm. getting older, you also have kids. You also have children to think about what kind of values you're going to instill into them and what kind of energy, for lack of a better phrase, you're going to put out to your fans and to the world because it, it's not like you don't necessarily want to live a different life you know, at home than you would on screen or mm-hmm. on microphones or whatever. You mm-hmm. want to actually be as transparent to your fans as possible. Like whatever you would teach your kids, you want to be able to have the fans learn as well. Yeah, and we evolve and we grow <clears throat> and we learn as we go. Like Rob tried to put me on game with some of this conservative, like <laughs> another side. You know, I was very close minded to a lot of this Republican stuff because it's like, man, that's stuffy, vanilla, Mitt Romney type shit. It's yeah. not very attractive yeah. to me. It's never spoken to me. They never played Despacito for me. <laughs> they never booked mariachis for me. Right. But I look at shit different. I look at Univision different. I look at Telemundo different. I look at Jorge Ramos different. You know, Jorge Ramos, what did he... Oh, they jumped on his ass. He put on Twitter a picture of a newspaper that said Biden wins. And he says, en papel. And he didn't say, like, it's a fact and it's a done. And he didn't say all that. He just kind of put it out there. Mm-hmm. Boy, all the pro-Trump Latinos, the Venezuelans, the Cubans, like all these people were just like, dude, you have such a responsibility. Like right. the media does not decide. You know this was going to be highly contested regardless of who won. You know they're still doing recounts. You know they're talking about this Dominion software that, you know, just switched over votes. You yeah. know that there's lawsuits. There's, there's always been cheating in elections locally and and so on. Like, how irresponsible is it? And, and they said, too, they're like, bro, you had the nerve to go to Venezuela and try to show what Maduro and, and, and socialism and communism and a dictatorship and, you know, the hyperinflation that they're having with their money and there's nothing on the shelves. It's like you went down there and tried to do a story on it. And here you are almost like perpetuating it mm-hmm. by putting it out there because that's poor leadership. People come to to Jorge Ramos for some kind of fucking integrity and Mm. some honesty. And to a lot of these cats, a lot of these cats that try to pass off their art as like satire, but it's like, bro, you know, you're smart enough. Mm -hmm. You know, either, either, either you're dumb, which I don't think so. I'm just going to assume you're smart. You know what I'm saying? Like people just fall in line with the same opinion that big tech, all the censorship. And before I forget, let me say this. A lot of times people are, um, because this this could easily be like a twelve episode, yeah. fucking thing. Because there's so much in it. We yeah. still have to we still have to tackle like, but Trump is a racist. All He's the bullet points. Hitler. All the talking points. How dare you turn your back on la raza? And it's like, what if I told you Biden and Obama deported more people, built all the cages, and they had kids in cages, and the media covered for them while throwing Trump under the bus. What would you do then? Uh, 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 but he said Mexicans are rapists. He didn't say we were all rapists. He didn't say all of them are rapists. He said some. And he his point was the border's fucked up. And it's a whole lot of problems with the border. We could do a whole episode on the border. How they, they're um, trafficking kids through there. They're renting kids. They're recycling kids. Meaning I need a bar. I'm going to give I'm going to give this family a hundred bucks so I could uh kind of cross with them Mm -hmm. and pretend that they're mine and then they can get some i don't know asylum or some shit there's all kind of sex trafficking going on houston texas is the human trafficking capital of america including children they bust them motherfuckers all the time but people not ready to have that discussion especially a lot of people on the left a lot of liberals the white liberals and so on uh, I guess the non-brown ones. They don't even know what coyotes are. Trump right. mentioned coyotes on the fucking debate, talking about, well, you got coyotes. A lot of these kids didn't even come with parents. A lot of these kids, we looking for the parents, but the parents using this shit as daycare. He he mentioned the coyotes, and they were like, oh, he's really lost it now. First, he's telling us to drink Fabuloso. Now he's saying that there's coyotes transferring children. What kind of fucking mammal transfers children what is this wolf like dog like no fucking clue the but twitter it, twitter i mean when he said that the memes that were oh, coming man. oh my god it was hilarious that's one thing the left can't do the left can't meme for some reason the left cannot meme oh uh, people always ask me but chingo all this explaining you're doing you never really said why trump is better it's like man there's a laundry list but i'll just give you one 
<clears throat> China. C H I N A. A lot of motherfuckers don't know how big of a threat China is, and they also don't know how friendly Biden is with China. Without giving, it, without even getting into um, the open investigation of money laundering that the Biden crime family is going through, uh, d- while he was running for president, you would think the media would come out, or maybe the head of the FBI. You would think they'd come out and be like, um, uh, "Ladies and gentlemen, uh, people of the country, just want to let you know that one of the candidates is uh, in active, open investigation, looking into some uh, peddling influence. We had the son." And the brother, uh, Jim Biden and Hunter Biden, flying around to Ukraine and all these countries, picking up the bag, getting that bread, chunking a percentage to pop, you know, the big guy, you know, Joe. And you would think that they would inform us, like, oh, by the way, Buddy's under investigation, man. They, you know, they a little crooked. No, they, they covered that for under the rug so quick. And everyone's like, what are you talking about, Chingo? And that's the word. It's it's a little frustrating because, you know, people think I'm just a conspiracy theorist. You know, they think that if I don't go along with what George Lopez and Edward James Omos and Eva Longoria, Cristela, like all these people that they got over there that are like basically saying we looked at everything. And as a leader, we're going to go ahead and promote and we're going to let everyone know that we think what everyone should do is vote for Joe Biden because Trump told us to drink bleach and he's a racist and he called Nazis fine people and all this shit that's a hoax. Yeah. Once I started seeing how all this stuff was a hoax, that's when I was like, oh, let me let me change my glasses because now I'm going to look at shit different. So after that, to get back to the, the original story at the beginning, when the Periscope goes live, you go yeah. inside, it's two and a half hours worth of content. Uh-huh. You come back out, you open your phone, what happens? No, the next day. The next, the next mor- day. The next morning, my, my boy Frank Lopez compound films he sent me a text of a screenshot from that podcast page maybe someone sent it to him okay um they sent he sent me a screenshot and it was like i know you're trying to go viral but this may not be the way (laughs) and i looked at it and i was like man let me click on this bullshit and sure enough i was like "Ooh, that didn't sound very good (laughs) like oh wow they really went through and finally they they cut out where i'm like free the kids in cages of course free the kids in cages i don't give a fuck who wins y'all no contact y'all need to fix that shit they took that out they took out all the funny fly shit you know so to some people they're just like chingo decided to throw on a mariachi hat and be like orale vote for trump but it's like no i'll the mariachi hat came in the middle of me riffing saying like and then they'll book mariachis to impress us i was like wait a minute hold on and it's penny's little mariachi hat and I was like, hang on. And the, the camera's shaky because it's on the phone. And I go and you see like the ceiling and I put it on. But uh, but I'm not tripping. You know, I'm not tripping like at all. Um, you know, fear has no power over me. Uh, I fear no man. Um, I'm not tripping at all. I, I, I just know how to look at this shit. A lot of the people talking shit were never really fans to begin with. Right. And uh, I feel like we're better off as a community for it because now some people might be like, well, fuck, man, I've always thought Chingo was a smart dude. Either he's lost it, he's went down some weird fucking rabbit hole and he took the red pill, or maybe he's trying to warn us and he's letting us know, bro, a lot of that shit on the news ain't real. They're doing fake news to each other. Fox News does it to Biden and back and forth. But... There's just a whole lot more fake news about Trump only because there's a whole lot more left leaning stuff. And he, and then they don't really see the censorship of big tech. They yeah. don't see a lot of this stuff where it's like they want you to suppress your voice. They don't see how motherfuckers uh, like if you come out as a Biden supporter, you're not going to lose your job. No one's going to ridicule you. Nobody calls you names. I know some people would argue like, well, they might call you snowflake. It's like, okay, but you're not getting canceled. Yeah. There's not a mob. out. For, nobody's trying to dox you. Uh, they're not making a list. list. Man, them old. <laughs> hey, man, whoever's listening right now, and I'm, I'm going to name some names because, you know, I really don't give a fuck. But I'm keeping a list. These motherfuckers talking about, oh, yes, oh, yes, girl. Mm-hmm, write it down. We're going to remember it. We sh- it's time to unite and heal. It's time to move off, move on and heal. But we were going to remember 
who, bitch, fuck you. You know who else kept a list? Yo mama, bitch. And they're all like, yas, queen, AOC, yas. Man, and a lot of these, these are dudes I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about dudes that people fucking respect and look and follow and look up to. Talking about, yes, we need to fucking keep a list. You don't get your old beta male ass up out of here, boy. So you open the video the next day. Frank sends you that the link. You click it. What's the first thing that's running through your mind? Damage control or how, how are you going to lean into it? <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to lie, man. Um, my The word in my head is not damage control. Uh, you know, the way some people do damage control is they hurry up and comply. They bend to the mob. They, they go on an apology tour. That's not, I, I didn't, I, 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 I doubled down. <laughs> I mother, I triple dog double yeah. down. Yeah. Go, I'm going all out Hodge <laughs> twin on your puss ass. Nah, I'm not going to lie. Uh, initially, it's kind of one of those like, oh, you say something to me. Okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I was going back and forth. Like, I'll tell a motherfucker, bitch, let me click on your bio. And I'll look that they'll either have a whole bunch of gender pronouns hmm. or they'll have, it'll be a Latino with hashtag BLM mm-hmm. and shit all up in their thing. And a mask in their avatar. They'll be wearing, sometimes they'll wear a mask in their profile pic. Uh, sometimes they're co- straight up communist. Like straight up. Like they got the sickle, like the little oh, Russian yeah. thing in their fucking Twitter bio. And I'm like, bro, we're not even going to get any progress done. Because from the jump, you're on some communist shit. And... I just can't wrap my brain around that because it's never worked. The death count for communism is in the multi, multi, multi millions if you add up Stalin and, and, you know, all that shit. Um, So I just, a lot of these motherfuckers are just on some Antifa shit. They were never really fans. They're just like, you know, low serotonin, (laughs) bottom of the totem pole, beta males. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of times people don't know how to compare things either. So some people look at it like, oh, this is another Carlos Mencia. It's over. Mm. It's over. Nah, nah, this is not Carlos Mencia. Carlos Mencia got caught stealing jokes and he got called out by an alpha male and he got banned from the comedy store, which is a big part of his identity. It probably altered his self-image. His serotonin levels went low. He got slouched. And defeated. No. There ain't no ain't no alpha male call me out. You know what I'm saying? No. Um ain't sh- this is not this ain't even apples and oranges. In hindsight, we're gonna look back and be like, Chingo, how do you have so many young fans, Asian fans, black fans, white fans, all kind of fans, and you're no longer in this box. You're no longer beholden. You know, these are the the people that are trying to cancel me look just like me. Yeah. So the irony in that. Yes, yeah, the irony. So and, and you know, they're just like, you think your fucking MAGA friends are gonna support you, bitch? <laughs> and it's like, well man, with fans like you, I don't need enemies. <laughs> but now nah, we're good, because ninety percent everybody's cool and um right now I just have to you know I know that we're living in this time where the media has never had more power. They've never been more biased. Shit has never been more rigged and fraudulent. Uh, You know, democracy, there's a lot at stake. People don't even look at the shit the same. They don't even know how other countries are salivating at the mouth. Mm -hmm. Watching us be so tribal and and divided because everybody drank the Kool-Aid of CNN is real. Uh, Trump told us to drink bleach. He's Hitler, Nazi, orange man, bad. Biden is going to save us and there will be no dark winter. It's like, no, y'all voted for lockdowns, taxes. Like, y'all voted for China. Y'all voted for a gang of bullshit. Mm -hmm. Um, Trump, the first one, didn't start no wars. He had all these peace deals going. He's tough on China. He's bringing jobs back. He's helping, you know, for being a quote-unquote racist. He a horrible racist because he's, like, hooking up the black community like crazy. Prison reform giving money to the um, historic, historically black colleges, universities. This is all the shit I was saying in my Periscope. Yeah. All this kind of shit. Telling you how defund the police is a trap. Telling you how Antifa sounds cool in a name, but it really ain't cool. Telling people how they use George Floyd's tragic death for a shadow agenda. They, they're using it. They're using our emotion. 
Um, you know, but uh, yeah, the whole thing, the whole two party system is pretty emotionally driven, right? And even if you consider yourself a conservative or a Democrat or whatever, but in this case, let's say more on the Republican red pill conservative side, you you see them being more open minded. They don't necessarily think with their emotions 100 percent of the time, as you see the opposing side that's driven by, as we see in the videos, hate, you know, and ensuing violence and and whatnot. It's just it's a different like you said, it's a different pair of glasses. Yeah, they look through the world. So many people are like, these elections were 100 percent accurate. You know, your guy lost, Chingo. <laughs> Joe Biden got 78 million votes. Duh. Man, he, he got more votes than Obama. That's he, crazy. Man, he, bro, and they, they're looking at the, um, not only that Dominion software, but they're also looking at... Smart Tatic, Smart Attic, yeah. A lot of shit. Like, for instance, the only places where, some of the places where he supposedly beat Trump happened to be in swing states in uh, Democrat-run cities right. where they basically didn't allow people to come in and watch and supervise. They didn't allow them to be like, hey, man, what y'all doing in there with them votes? Um, and it just so happened that in those places that I just described, Biden got more votes than people were even registered to vote. Yeah. And Texas is one of the few states that said, no, no, thank you to that Dominion uh, voter software. Mm -hmm. Three times we turned it down. Mm -hmm. And guess what else? The Texan flag is the only flag that could fly the same height as the American flag because we were once our own republic. And a few years ago, there was a movement for us to, what's the word, secede, mm -hmm. go off on our own. Because we got all the petroleum, we got all this oil industry, uh, we got a damn good economy, a friendly business climate, low unemployment. Uh, we're not in debt like a motherfucker. We the shit, and we're really propping up the rest of the country that's Democratic run, and and that's fucked off, and they're in debt, and they they can't even keep the lights on. Yeah. Despite what the coastal elites will tell you, you know the East Coast and the West Coast. It, I don't know why they want to downplay the South like that. Oh, they look at Texas as a flyover state. Crazy. Like there's no culture down here, but we're the most. Houston, Texas is the most diverse city in the country. I'll say it again. More diverse in L.A., more diverse in New York City. The most diverse. We're the city of the future. We got the culinary scene. We got art. We got music. We got everything. Low, you know, I guess the taxes are lower than, than some of these places. Yeah, no state tax on top of it. And I know people would assume they, they'd be like, oh, well, fucking sellout, vendido, you chose your tax money instead of your raza. <laughs> And it's like, bro, you don't even know what tax bracket I'm in. Like, you're assuming just because 50 Cent cited taxes as a reason that that's my motherfucking reason. My reason is this. You know, I live here. I'm an American. I got a family. I got babies. I got a wife. And I like law and order. Call me a sellout if you want. I don't want motherfuckers burning businesses around me. And the governor of Florida, DeSantis, he just came up with this law. I think it's called like anti-mob or some shit where it's basically if they trying to loot your shit and these rioters are coming all up in your, I don't know, technically if they got to be on your property or they technically have to be destroying your business, you could shoot a motherfucker. So, so a lot of um, Republicans and stuff, they look at that governor, especially a lot of the governor, um, people that aren't crazy about Governor Abbott, the mm -hmm. Texas uh, Republican governor. They feel like he's not Republican enough. Right. And they always compare to uh, De DeSantis. I don't know how to say it. But they're like, that's a real Republican because their businesses were open. Their economy was wide open. And people try to clown like, yeah, but look at all their cases. Right. You know, because Corona's like the fucking kukui. And it's like, who don't have cases? Yeah. And they always try to blame Trump talking about, well, he has 200,000 lives on his hand, blood on his hands, and that's why I'm voting for Biden. And it's like, okay, if you really wanted to compare that, you would literally have to go back in time a little bit, swap out leaders, like pick a leader. I don't know, uh, South Korea. Okay, cool. They're an island, technically, because you got the DMZ and you got North Korea and then you ain't got shit else around them. But okay, we'll use them. We'll go back in the time machine, we'll take Trump out, and we'll put in this genius leader that's so fucking genius, and Trump's such a goddamn idiot who fell asleep at the wheel. Let's swap him out. Will we have deaths? Well, first, 
he's going to be like, okay, let's do some testing. Guess what? All them tests we had were faulty. Same tests Trump had that were faulty, the first batch, all them are, are faulty. So now what? Oh, shit. Okay. Um, uh, well, hopefully he shuts down flights from China because that's what Trump did. If he don't do that, Trump's ahead. What else are you going to do? Uh, maybe I'll go get some PPE that, that is in these warehouses that the previous administration, because they're so fucking smart. The previous administration, surely they had a whole bunch of PPE and shit ready. Uh, did they? I don't know. I don't think they did. I don't think they did either. Uh, y'all could probably fact check me on that. But the point is this. The only way to truly compare if someone could have done better is you would literally have to have all the same variables except for that one variable, which is the president. Who would be the commander in chief? Pick anyone. Pick the leader of France, Canada, Taiwan. I don't give a fuck. They're going to have deaths. Why? Because we have 50 states, 50 governors, all doing 50 different things. And you have to consider what's the, po what's the obesity population? Mm -hmm. How many people overweight? How many people got diabetes? What's the median age? How old is our country? Um, vitamin D levels. Mm -hmm. What's the black population of your country? Why? Because vitamin D levels vary, you know, due to uh, melanin and pigmentation. You don't absorb as much. Right. If you're born with natural SPF, you're not going to get the vitamin D from the, from the sun. That's why certain communities are affected worse. You know what I'm saying? So they're trying to compare shit that you can't even compare. It's like you're comparing shit to like, they're like, well, uh, uh, such and such, they, they did better. And it's like, well, right now they're having a second wave, for example, yeah. right? It's like, well, uh, 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 okay. And here they might mention a country that country might be real good at complying culturally speaking. They might be better at compliance. Maybe wearing masks is already part of their culture. Maybe they're not as rebellious as Americans are because we're rebellious. Yeah. We're on some bitch. You ain't finna tell me what to do. Right. And you have to factor that in along with median age, obesity. Overall size, too. Usually, you know, people say uh, Switzerland or whatever. These areas that they always re refer to are smaller than the United States. So if there's less people, you know, if they're doing less testing, for instance, and they always cite things that are so commonly just... It's such a common thing, like, oh, we got more cases because we got more tests, duh, you know, say so shit like that. But then they just, they overlook that, or they don't post that, or they don't really uh, put a lot of attention to it. And I wanted to go back to you saying, like, we're talking about the Dominion and the votes and the software and all this stuff. Yeah. Actually, today, this podcast, I'll, I'll post it today. It's the 16th, of, Monday the 16th. On the way here, uh, I was watching that mainstream media is saying that Trump has basically redacted the lawsuits in Pennsylvania, where they've already said there's over 700,000, uh, you know, votes that were counted without Republican, you know, supervision or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it's not true. They didn't, he didn't redact it. He didn't, he didn't stop the lawsuit. And Politico themselves actually made a post and linked the lawsuit, the papers. And in the papers themselves, it, it's either bad journalism or they, they posted the wrong one. It has it that it's still an active lawsuit. It's just, again, mainstream media trying to paint a different narrative. Half-truths. Right. Half-truths. Um, a lot of times what they do in mainstream media, there's these little tricks people do that hopefully, hopefully everybody watching, I mean listening and watching, <clears throat> hopefully by the end of this series, if we do a good job of communicating, mm -hmm. they'll be able to watch the news and be like, oh, I think this is an example. This is what Chingo was talking about, where let's say Rob says, uh, he just says like, oh, my favorite color is red mm -hmm. or some shit. They'll be like, hmm, well, that's odd because technically maroon and burgundy are not the same. Although many argue they're shades of red. Uh, Don Lemon, what do you think? Maroon, who, <laughs> why would anybody? Basically, they'll misinterpret what right. you said and run off and do a whole hour about their misinterpretation. Yeah. It's happening to me as we speak. There's people on YouTube because these days all you need is a little webcam and you can broadcast. They'll be like, so today, that son of a bitch, Chingo Bling, fucking son of a bitch, denounced his rasa, hates his brown skin, is anti-immigrant. He's He went from they can't deport us all to build the wall. He literally went, to, and I was like, did I ever? And then they'll do a whole hour podcast. What do you think about him saying, being all build the wall and denouncing <laughs> his brown skin and being anti-immigrant? And it's like, 
I literally am not any of those things. I literally did not say any of those things. But you're going to sit here and probably accumulate 325 comments about how they're so upset about me saying build the wall and denouncing my brown skin. Chingo Bling denounces just to get you to click. Yeah. Because I'm li- I'm a little bit higher on the totem pole than a lot of these folks. So it's asymmetrical warfare. You know, it's... It's low-hanging fruit. Yeah, it's kind of like, this is the cheese man. Yeah. We're going to just misinterpret everything. And then we're going to do a whole hour episode about our misinterpretation. And then everyone's chiming in based on their opinion that they're assigning to people. Yeah. And guess what? This could literally be a case study on hoaxes, <laughs> fake news. Like the shit that I'm going through, you could damn near look at it like a little small scale hoax, fake news, taking shit out of context. It's almost like if there's a one sheet vocabulary, like there's going to be a quiz. It's going to be like, okay, what are some things that could help shape a story? A oh, lack of context. You know, like George Floyd. What percentage of the population saw the nine minute tragedy of this dude all up on his neck, him screaming he can't breathe, and we watch him die? It went super viral. It was disgusting. What percentage of the people watched the hour long body cam footage leading up? Mm. Nah, we don't want to see that, Chingo. I already saw what I needed to see, homie. Right. With my own two eyes. Okay. Video lies. So do photos. A lot of a lot all that shit li- can lie to you. Mm-hmm. And do you remember that uh Yanni or Laurel? Mm-mm. That little thing. It went viral. Um it was like this little like brain uh phenomenon where it's a little video of a dude he says something or it's an you hear the audio, but it's either half the people hear Laurel, the other half hear Yanni. Mm. And they Yanni and Laurel don't even sound the same. I feel like I know what you're talking about. They don't even sound the same, but it's the thing that your brain does yeah. that if if I don't know what it is, if like if you think it says that or if you if it's telling you that that's what it says, now you hear it. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like almost like when AOC said they called her a bitch or some shit. Yeah. And that might have been one of those, I don't know. But um uh, but yeah, I'm they're literally hoaxing me right now. And the way you said this could be like a case study, it can also be an exercise in being an independent thinker. You mm-hmm. know, if you hear you talk about these things and expand upon things you won't hear on the mainstream media, it should be your duty to find it interesting for one mm-hmm. and compelling enough to go make your own informed decisions by looking up the research and looking up the papers and looking up the real stories, not just the 15 second clip you saw on CNBC or CNN or whatever. Like, like, um, we haven't structured out, this is kind of like maybe the introductory episode, for sure. but I definitely want to dive in, in terms of like education, you know, the whole defund the police thing. Yeah. And I want to have links, you know, in the show notes so you can actually go read the stuff we're we're citing, like Mm -hmm. all the sources, any videos, the full videos, not just the little clips so that you can, again, it's easier. Like we're actually giving it to you. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging you to be an independent thinker and we're actually giving you the information to go see yourself. Yeah. And I know some people, again, some people, man, you know, we're human. So some people aren't really ready to have an open mind and, and just trust a motherfucker in terms of like, all right, Chingo. I may not agree with you by the end of this thing, but I'm at least give you the benefit of the doubt Mm -hmm. that you're not a fucking Nazi. Yeah. Like this, this, what is the word? This narrative is so ridiculous. People are so fucking brainwashed and mind fucked that they instantly think, uh, if you're, if you're somewhat Trump curious or friendly towards Trump or anything that's remotely, like that right away white supremacy man these motherfuckers on twitter accuse me of uh having white tino privilege (laughs) you mentioned that briefly when we were on the phone what does this mean from what i can deduce from the shit whatever the word is from what i could tell is they're basically saying that amongst latinos who are overall oppressed right that's the narrative we're all oppressed in 2020 right If you are a little bit shade, a little bit lighter, like say you have more of the colonizer's blood essay versus more indigenous sangre, you somehow have privilege and now you're blind to the realities of the world. We're all oppressed. 
And it's the white man's fault. And it's like, no, bitch, it's 2020. There's no law that, that says I can't drink from the same fucking fountain or I can't buy a house or I can't go vote. I'm not a full human. I don't have rights. I'm a second class citizen. No, fuck you. I am not a second class citizen. You're not going to put that on me. I'm not going to teach that to my kids. And um, my 12-year-old Mickey, she, uh, we had to end up putting her in uh, like private school, like a church type of school mm-hmm. because during all this BS quarantine, she was just not able to keep up with the Zoom. It just was not clicking. All this Zoom class, click here, upload this, read that, watch this video, submit through this link. <clears throat> For whatever reason, I don't know if she was being lazy, but um, she was getting way behind. Mm. We end up putting her in this uh, private school, and she's like, I've learned more about my Christian faith and the Bible and God and religion and all this. She said, she's like, in one month, Dad, than my entire existence. Oh, wow. And she's like breaking stuff down. She's like, oh, then I was telling her about um, how lobsters been around 350 million years, yet dinosaurs lived 65 million years ago. So the lobsters are way more primitive or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. They've just been around longer and I'm explaining stuff about the brain. She's like, oh, so whoever book that is, so he's a, um, what did she say? So he's an evolutionist. He's not a creationist. And I'm like, well, I don't know. What are you? I don't know if he's an atheist. I haven't figured all that out. Yeah. I'm not an expert on Jordan Peterson. And she's like, okay, because creationists believe that. And, and I'm like, okay. And then she starts saying, and I'm like, well, what about the dinosaurs, baby? What are they? How does that work? She's like, well, basically, I, I'm being taught that God created the world um, with old stuff on it. Like it, it was created to look. Like it was already around, like you know what I'm saying. Okay. Like it, it, it was new, but with a bunch of history and just old stuff on it. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? I heard that Darwin's theory of evolution is about to be debunked due to simulation theory, meaning it's way more probable that we're living in a matrix simulation, which lines up with what they're teaching her. Hmm. In other words, if if the Messiah, if Jesus, you know, the son of God, the son of the creator came as a prophet to earth to explain how the creator, let's just say the designer of the matrix, built all of this and built it with old stuff already on it. Technically, that still fits simulation theory. So it might be like vindication to all the Christians that have been called crazies. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of saying like, well, hey, it was a simulation, but you know, it was it was my God that simulated. It. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I haven't heard it put like that. Yeah, man, that I don't know. I'm I might be wrong about a lot of stuff, but I do not trust the media, man. They they've been they've been caught lying to us too many times, and it, I I feel like with all this election stuff, they're trying to set the table and prime everyone. To believe that when Trump comes with the receipts and his lawsuits and whether it's Supreme Court or whatever, and his team of lawyers show straight up evidence, sworn testimony, witnesses, signed affidavits, everything, all that good shit, people are going to be like, and it gets reversed? Yeah. Trump stole the election. For the next four years, just like he's a Russian spy. He stole the election. I have this really cool meme that shows... Here, let me show it to the camera. Find it. It's, it should be my favorites. But only the meme, nothing else. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but go on, man, if you think of something. Um... Well, yeah, I mean, you know, also, in it, we'll, we'll have a better understanding of how the, the series is going to go after we finish this initial episode. But, you know, people talk about things like, in depending on how deep you want to go into it, is, you know, where's the red wave that was coming, right? Well, if you're looking at just the presidency like it's the most important thing, that's not necessarily true. If Biden wins, let's just say, right? But what you didn't see or understand or hear was the red wave of how many House seats got flipped to Republicans versus Democrats. And is the Senate still controlled by uh, Republicans as well? He's basically going to be sitting on his hands for four years because he won't be able to do anything. This blue wave that they said were also coming where he's going to sweep the presidency. He's going to they're going to get the Senate back. They're going to also control the House. That didn't come at all. As of I think today, I think there's 12 House seats that got flipped from Democrat to Republicans. That's then a very important red wave that came that nobody's talking about. So now when you talk about legislation, legislation needs to get passed. 
it's a whole nother ball game now. You're talking about two, two. Well, the Senate is still controlled by Republicans. The Democrats still control the House, but the majority isn't as big. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of really important little variables there that is it's important to understand. Yeah, but all people want to understand is orange man bad. Right. Orange man bad. <laughs> Biden good for la raza. Biden's good for la raza. Orale, Kamala. Orale, Kamala. Biden's good for la raza. Orange man bad. She make that into a song. <laughs> Um, orange man bad. Oh, oh, uh, somebody sent me a TikTok. This chick was driving and she's all happy. She's like, and if you are a brown race and if you have a dreamer or somebody on DACA in your family and you voted for Trump, shame on you. Ba 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 ba. Even though we can get into the DACA and all that oh, yeah. on the next episode. Sure. But she's like, and that's why I'm glad. That's why I'm happy. Joe Biden landslided bitch ass Trump. And I was like, <laughs> Man, y'all believe the news. Too, talking about landslided. Man, old boy had 22 people at his rallies. Come on. And I even said that on the... Dude, I said that on the two and... all A lot of this stuff. I said on the two and a half hour Periscope that I already know people, it's too long for people to go watch. They'd rather see the 10 second clip. And when we talk about DACA and Dreamers and all that on the next episode or whenever we get to it, keep in mind the name Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, mm. who is controlled by the Democrats, but has had so many seats flipped that she probably won't have enough votes to remain Speaker of the House You know, by, by the time this is all done. But anyway. And then I want to tell you how my stance evolved and where I was. Like during all the Ukraine quid pro quo, like when Trump was in trouble because he was on the phone yeah. saying, I need you to look into this for me. I still believed Adam Schiff was a nice guy and Nancy Pelosi was a nice guy person and and that why the fuck did trump quid pro quo last year you mentioned that on the podcast a lot if you remember yeah because i was just like man what the fuck trump doing anyway check out this meme uh it says it has like the screaming liberal yeah trump colluded with russia and then it's hillary it says that was me (laughs) and then it says trump kept kids in cages obama says uh that was me (laughs) Trump obstructed an active investigation. Here goes, uh, I think that's Chuck Schumer and Pelosi. That was us. Yep. And then the the, the liberal, liberal says, Trump had a quid pro quo in Ukraine. And then Biden says, mm, that was me. <laughs> so. Have you posted that yet? That's an excellent meme. Man, I got him on deck. Because, right. you know, I got an album coming out, baby. Black you know, Friday. Black Friday, Versace Mariachi. Brr, 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 brr. That whole jamming like a motherfucker. And the merch is even hotter than the music, I dare say. I got one for you. I'll send to you. Uh, you know, unfortunately, shout out to our boys, the Astros. It says, nobody cheats better than us. Hold You've my beer. It? Hold our beer. The Patriots and the Astros. Sure and there it. you have. <laughs> nobody cheats better than us. Hold, Hold our, our beer. beer. People cheat. Um, so, so during the impeachment, just to contextualize, right? Because that's everybody's favorite word yeah uh during the impeachment i was like finally we get to get this reality tv motherfucker that should have never won in the first place uh let's get them out impeach we'll come to find out they couldn't even properly do that they they couldn't even impeach him properly because they didn't have shit it was all like it come to find out it was just all fabricated like russia 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 it turns out it was the Democrats had all the Russian connects working with them to try to set set shit up. Like Trump really didn't. It was always like he's boys with Trump. I mean, uh, Putin. And there's a P tape about him. Bitch, please. <laughs> um, and then speaking of. Um, what was I? I fucking brain fart. It's just jumping around. because it's no, so no, no, fucking yeah. much. We're talking about you know, <clears throat> Dreamers and Pelosi and then Trump and the quick pro quo in Ukraine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Man, once I started really finding out, like, okay, so let me just, in case y'all don't know about this Ukraine shit. So the initial story was, man, there's a whistleblower. It's this dude, I forget, he was like a Navy guy, very credible. You know, they, they listen in on the calls, and they heard Trump telling the new president of Ukraine, hey, man, congrats. You know, um, they fired a prosecutor out there. There's a company called Burisma. I really need you to look into it. You know, I got your money. I'm going to send the money. You know, but I really need you to do me that favor. You know, we, a lot of people care a lot about that. And it's, it's we don't want any corruption. Ukraine has been riddled with corruption. Which, by the way, any 
country that's rich in resources always has higher corruption because there's more shit to be corrupt about. Right. Japan doesn't have a lot of natural resources. They're very honest and uh, they don't have a lot of corruption. Anyway, so uh, the story was Trump is on the phone. You're not supposed to do deals like that. You're not supposed to say quid pro quo. Do this for me. I'll do this for you. Talking about Burisma and Ukraine and this and that. And they tried to impeach him over that. Couldn't do it. Come to find out what that phone call was about. The shit Trump was talking about is this. Joe Biden on camera has already bragged about how he got a prosecutor fired or else he, he wasn't going to uh, give them this billion dollars of aid or military support or something like it was like a billion. And sure enough, son of a gun got fired. That's how he said it. <laughs> yeah. Son of a son of a bitch got fired. Motherfucker. I got clout. And that prosecutor got fired because he was snooping around this company called Burisma, which is owned by this really rich oligarch in the Ukraine who got a lot of money. And sometimes they like to, you know, do international deals and get favors and try to get a picture in the White House, like influence, you know, shit like that. Corruption. So come to find out it was Joe Biden's son, Hunter, who was getting all this money. He, he was on crack, but yet he was getting a ton of money every month, every month, just to be on the board of Burisma. Coincidentally, the prosecutor that was investigating the, the corruption with Burisma and Hunter and the Bidens, he got fired. So really, Trump was doing the right thing. Trump was basically saying, hey, man, they did a quid pro quo. Basically, every, a lot of shit that the left accuses these folks of doing is basically shit that they did. Mm -hmm. They'll accuse them of cheating as they cheat. Mm -hmm. They'll accuse him of Russia as they doing to Russia. They'll accuse him of he's anti, you know, he's talking about build the wall. He's talking about deporting people. Well, bitch, so did y'all. So that's where we're at, America. <laughs> when he came to his realization, right? So to, like, maybe to tie it up in a nice neat bow for this yeah. introduction for, to the series. What did, did you at the end of that day find yourself just thinking and contemplating the last few, you know, years of your of your adult life is like, man, it was kind of all just. Dog shit. It was all bullshit. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, especially like when you... See, I got to give credit to Scott Adams because, you know... It's, creator of Dilbert. Yeah, he's the creator of Dilbert. He predicted that Trump was going to win before he won the first time. And uh, he's, uh, his books are great. His podcast is great. And I got to give him credit because I'd listen to him religiously and he would give these little truth bombs and he would break shit down as to how to look at things a little different and how... That's te technically fake news. And let me tell you that if you pull up the transcript of the fine people hoax, which is supposedly Trump went on TV and said there were fine people on both sides in Charlottesville, Virginia, when they were protesting taking down uh, the taking down of a, a, a Confederate statue. Well, the narrative is Trump called Nazis fine people because he said there were fine people on both sides. Now, they cut off the part where he says, and I'm not talking about Nazis and white supremacy. That should be disavowed and condemned totally. You know, we'd have no room for hate in any hate group in this country. I'm talking about historians and different people that were, were against the illegal taking down of a statue. There were people there that were not Nazis against the taking down of the statue now if we had real journalism in this country if we had people with integrity all they had to do was maybe put out a tweet hey contact me i'm doing a story about charlottesville if anybody was there that isn't a nazi that was uh, uh, against the taking down of the thing and there were a lot of antifa motherfuckers on on the side of the other side of taking taking it down right which I'm not against. I think they they, I think it's a great idea to take them down. You just gotta maybe put them in a museum or do it in the daytime. Do it in the proper way. Don't just let Antifa do it. There was a lot of bad people on the side of take it down. So that's another thing Trump was saying. It's like, look, y'all, it ain't what it looks like. There's fine people on both sides, and there was some bad people on both sides. It wasn't just motherfuckers with tiki torches and then really nice people. Yeah, he's like that's not what it was. But once I saw, that was one of the ones that I saw when I saw the unedited, and it's like, 
Oh, shit. The news be lying. These motherfuckers will straight up lie to your face. And I'm, I was just so naive. I'm like, damn, I just, I, I don't know what kind of cushy existence I lived in where I'm like, oh, it's 2020. It's America. And everything's hunky-dory. And don't nobody lie to us. And orange man bad, right? Why would the news lie about this orange man being bad? Orange Hitler, right? Isn't he orange Hitler and everybody that follows him are Nazis? So a lot of the people that are mad at me are mad at me for the wrong reasons because they're hallucinating that he's orange man Hitler and anybody that shows him love is a Nazi. So some people really today walking around thinking chingo bling, the motherfucker that brought you Canelo, Tio Juventino, El Mamado, they can't deport us all. They can't deport us all. Comedy special, song after song, uh, uh, Ostrich Boots, parodies, Taco Shot, all that shit. Versace Mariachi. All that, yeah, uh, November 27th. All of that, you know, the Feria hats and, you know, like, all of that is a Nazi, is a white supremacist, white Tino privilege. It's so, it's the most retarded shit in the world. <laughs> and I literally tell myself, like, man, some of these people I don't want as fans. Yeah. And if you're going to be closed minded and if you're not going to give me the benefit of the doubt and you're that fucking stupid to believe a fucking hoax, false narrative then really, man, I really don't even need you as a fan. I don't want you as a fan. And a lot of these people never were fans because some of these ignorant people that are attacking me, I get the sense that they were never at my shows. The yeah. people at my shows, the overall general vibe, it's mostly couples. You know, they work hard. They got money. They they show up dressing nice, fresh cut, fresh fit. They, got, they went to the ATM. They had to hire a babysitter? Yeah, they hired a babysitter. They probably got the car washed earlier that day. I don't know. But they had dinner. They had drinks. They bought merch. The fucking improv comedy clubs, they got all kind of little fees and taxes and shit. They had no problem paying that. These are not roaching ass, begging ass, crybaby, whining ass motherfuckers at my show. Right. You know, I don't see no Antifa motherfuckers at my show. It's just hardworking Americans. You know, who happen to be Latino most of the time, although my fan base has gotten more diverse than some motherfuckers would like to think. Some people think that the only people that will ever support me are just brown people. And that's a fallacy. That's not the narrative, you know. <laughs> Bitch, I'm an alpha male, red-blooded American with high serotonin levels. I'm too high on the totem pole to not persuade. The cool part, too, is that, man, he's yeah, spe speaking the gospel here. Yeah, boy, talking about serotonin. Uh, the cool part is that in the comment section, which might be a segment that we do on yes. this series as well, you're seeing Let's your real fans already, other Latinos, who are who are defend not necessarily defending you, but in the sense, let's say, defending you, and also coming at the opposition with the facts. Mm -hmm. So without you having to go in there and play, you know, referee or, or putting whatever. Putting out fires. Or, put, or, or firefighter and putting out, firefi putting out fires. They're doing it for you, which is cool to see because the conversation's already, it's so, it's at a peak right now. Like, it's critical mass, right? That the people are like, no, 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 we're not going to stand for this. We're going to give you, we're going to put you on game because you seem to know what you're talking about. Well, let me actually educate you further, which is really cool. Yeah, or they'll hit them with some memes. Yeah, that's which, are, which are powerful, but <laughs> we should absolutely do a, a segment called like the comment section where, you know, you maybe read some off and I get to react. And yeah. then that could be a cool clip, you know, for social media or something. For sure. Because, um, you know, like I said, man, I'm not worried. I'm not sweating. And sometimes you have to shake the box. And as a leader, as an artist, sometimes you might have to be the bad guy. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes there's a plot twist. You know, sometimes. And to be all in all honesty, I didn't want to rap forever anyway. This could be my last album for all I care, even though I'm already cooking up the next one. For all I care, this could be the, I mean, I, I do this shit for fun anyway. I mean, I'm already good to where I don't, I don't have to rap. I don't have to do rap concerts, even though I got an album release party December 11th, uh, December 10th, San Antonio, Texas. You heard it here first. Um, stand up comedy. I love stand up, I enjoy it. Um, I, I, I don't anticipate any decline in the bottom line. All I think is growth and abundance and increase. Um, if anything, some of the assholes that were just stragglers, maybe they, I, I scurried them off because they're just so stuck in this fucking, um, defund the police, orale, BLM, whatever. Yeah. 
you know, they've already been indoctrinated. It's man. If anybody could chime in from California, like I, from what I, from what I'm witnessing now, I'm a lifelong Democrat, but from some of the comments I see, it's like the Cholos have been weaponized and mobilized by the Democratic Party. Like they have a stronghold. If I'm not mistaken, I'd love to go back. I don't know if it goes back to the Brown Berets during the civil rights movement or maybe they just maybe it's the public school education out there. I don't know what they teach them, but the Democratic Party has a stronghold and the media, current day media has such a power of hypnotism and persuasion. They pulling off the biggest magic trick ever done because I believe that there was a lot of dishonesty in this election. It's currently being covered by a dishonest media. And people are literally hypnotized. And that's why I sound so crazy to some people. Yeah. I, I sound like I fucking took the red pill. I watched too much Matrix. Um, I'm a con- Oh, there's this, uh, I, I won't even name him, but uh, there's a prominent artist in the Latino community who pretty much said I'm a conspiracy dope. A okay. conspiracy dope or some shit. Just a lazy, lazy, and, you know, lazy he, verbiage. He, he, he draws comics. Mm-hmm. And first, he, he called me out first. Talking about what the fuck is it? Uh, you know, Chingo is going to... I feel bad for Chingo Bling because he was supposed to be the head of ICE for Trump. And now Trump didn't win. So now Chingo can't be the head of ICE. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's cute. And then I'm like, okay, here's a comic you drew. Uh, that in, insinuates that Trump really did say drink bleach, which he did not. And I was like, if it turns out that this gets debunked, does it also make the comic debunked and null and void? Uh, you son of a gun. <laughs> okay. I understand that you respect your fans' intelligence and you understand that they can go look this up for themselves. I, you know, You should encourage it as a leader. So although you might want to pass it all off as satire, you still have a responsibility because people follow you and they look up to you and you're not really being a good shepherd. You feel me? Yeah. Like a good leader is going to encourage you to empower yourself with information. Otherwise, it seems like you run a business that requires your followers to be ignorant. And the minute that they're armed with information, your business plan falls apart. It also seems to me that if Trump loses, what are you going to draw for four years? Yeah. And so unless you're willing to tell me that you're going to hold truth to power and hold Biden accountable and you're not beholden to any particular party because you're Raza first and you're you're doing it in the interest of truth. <laughs> I'm going to pause after that one because... I not to get all biblical or nothing, but we're living we're literally living in a time where it's like the truth versus the lie. It's truth versus lie. You know, that's another way to that's another filter yeah. to view the world in. Um and people don't understand that there's persuasion going on all around us. People busy working. They mm-hmm. don't got time to be digging into this totally. shit. They just get in the car and they hear Orange Man Bad. They go home, turn on the TV, Orange Man Bad. They look at the newspaper, it said Biden wins. Well, shit, why would they lie to me? Right. Chingo, you're really telling me that they're all lying to me? Yeah. I think that they know that it's technically not over. And they're using funny terminology like president-elect. And I'm not a sore loser. I'm I'm not a cheerleader. People be like, put on your fucking MAGA hat, puto. (laughs) It's like, I'm not a cheerleader. I'm not a mascot. And I don't just take orders. So you telling me to wear it, bitch, I'm really not going to wear it now. And I really had no desire to wear it. Why? Because, number one, I don't pick teams like that. Because then I'm beholden to that team. Then I got to hate on everything that Democrats do, and I have to love everything Trump does. And that's not the case either. Yeah. So I, I'm in a good space. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what 2021 brings. I, f- I know I'm going to be vindicated because think about how much influence someone like a Candace Owens has. She tweets some shit. Millions of people see it. There's a lot of other people besides her that are planting seeds in people's heads. There's people on TikTok, Instagram. You got the Hodge twins, YouTube. You got 
Scott Adams, you got uh, uh, Ben Shapiro. You have all these people telling you stuff like this, like he did not say drink bleach and let's dig into this whole president elect term and let's talk about socialism and let's really dig into this defund the police thing. Yeah. And let's talk about this Breonna Taylor thing. And let's not, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff that all this propaganda of how they're trying to use, dude, they tried to use Vanessa Guillen's photo to basically say, vote for Biden. Yeah. We right. don't know how she was going to vote. Maybe her family might, maybe her friends might, might have known if she even voted ever at all. Um, I know her family met with Trump. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're all like Trump loyalists, but don't use a, a, a somebody that, that you already know it hit an emotional string. A lot of people saw what happened to her as a Brown issue. They didn't really see it as a human issue or a military issue. They saw it as Brown first because we've already been trained to see everything through the filter of race. Um, which is a neo-Marxist uh, agenda. We'll talk about that next time. <laughs> but uh, but if I forget, shout out to Second Baptist Church. They have a, a podcast. They have a couple podcasts. Um, one is Eleven Eleven, which is like their other service that the Son does. Doctor Ed, um, Doctor Ed Young. Then you got the OG Pop, Doctor Ben Young, and it's Second Baptist, and they literally go through stuff like critical theory. They'll break down stuff like conservatism versus liberalism. And they'll do a whole sermon, bring it up to the Bible and bring it up to the current day facts. And they'll be like, we cannot let a handful of neo-Marxists control what we say, do and think. He's like, there is a word that you can use yesterday that today they will cancel you for. Or there's a or they'll change the definition or they'll say you're no longer he's like there is a lifestyle that might have been okay for a long time as of yesterday and today you know it's kind of like what game are we playing here and they're also the ones it was on the 11 11 one the uh dr uh, ed young where he breaks down uh critical theory where he's saying this is what this is the game they play y'all it's like a latino male is oppressed a latino female is even more oppressed a latina gay female is even more and more oppressed they're slicing and dividing every which way like for a reason yeah and it's a dangerous game to play i don't play that game i don't subscribe to that i know a lot of people do a lot of people that argue with me on twitter <laughs> you know, with the white Tino privilege and they got all the pronouns and stuff, which I mean, I, I, I told a dude, I was like, bro, you got all your little pronouns in your thing. Like that, that alone says enough, you know? <laughs> and then they're like, now he's hating on nine non-binary. Now he's hating on, he's hating. He's a hater of non-binary. And I'm like, bro, sorry. I don't even know what that is. I'm sorry. I'm 41. They didn't have that shit when I was growing up. You couldn't just be a they, uh, she, him. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I'm all for, like, I don't give a fuck. If two dudes want to get married, I don't care. That shit don't affect me. That might be good for them and their family. You know, we got a whole bunch of gay friends. Like, we, uh, my buddy uh, who writes for The Chronicle, him and his husband, they have a son. They got a little boy. They have a beautiful family. You know, I, we work with all kinds of people. Most of my friends are Democrats. Why? Because I work with a lot of artists. Artists tend to be Democrats. Um, but anyway, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of shit in here. They could take out of fucking context and For be like, sure. he's, he's none. He's, and he hates online non-binary. It's like, nah, bro, I was just roasting you because I'm just showing you that we view the world through different filters. Reality is subjective and ideologically speaking, we're just on different pages. Yeah. And the way I illustrated that point on Twitter, I was like, a lot of y'all do not have Pimp C on your top five dead or alive rapper list. And that just shows you that reality is subjective. Y'all view the world through different filters and we're ideologically on different pages. How the fuck you ain't got Pimp C on your top five, bro? <laughs> what what factors, what variables, what are you looking at? <laughs> just disappointment in your eyes. What are you even? Fa what are you factoring in? Anyway, if we gotta secede, we shall secede. I, I'm just, dude. I told my soul. I was like, when all this shit was going on, I was like, 
really, we just got to turn up. We have to accentuate all the shit that we're about. I was like, you're going to see Mo Guns on my page just to show you about the Second Amendment. I was like, you're going to see some land. You know, fuck it. I like I like being Texan. And, you know, I was like, we need to have some more fucking Texan flags in this bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, turn up, man. Shit. You know, newsflash. Latino Hollywood has led us astray. Yeah. Latino Hollywood... I'm glad y'all blackballed me because I don't want to be a part of y'all. You know, Texas is going to be the new Hollywood. Y'all know that, right? I saw you posted that uh, billboard picture, right? And mm-hmm. wasn't the caption been blackballed? Yeah, I've been since... blackballed since the beginning. Yeah. Every every corner, every step, every which way. Interesting story. Yeah, hit it. So that album, The Can't Deport Us All, when it first came out, it was flying off the shelves. <clears throat> it was sold out everywhere. We'd literally be like, at a Best Buy in my old neighborhood on the southeast. And they're like, hmm, yeah, oh, yeah, we're all out. Okay, so what's up? Are y'all going to reorder? Oh, yeah, yeah, we need to. Yeah, people keep coming in here asking for it all the time. They get on the phone. They're on the computer. Hmm, that's odd. The system doesn't, the distributor, it's not allowing me. I don't know why. Let me make some more calls. Hmm, I, I can't. So what would possess a record label who sees in the numbers oh shit we didn't anticipate this you would think they would say oh fuck we need to put together a task force for this we need to like supplement reinforce we need to build a team like we need to make sure that we need to press up more we can't miss the mark we can't miss this momentum like press up more so that these best buys or whoever can order what they need so that we can continue to sell because it just came out and it hit number two on the uh, Heat Seeker albums chart. And it's like, well, why? Well, why they can it? Why? If it's selling so well, it's hitting the charts. People want to reorder, but you won't let them. Is it because A, they didn't anticipate it to do that? Perhaps. B, maybe my deal was more designed to just be a tax write off and they didn't anticipate it. C, I was getting 70%. They're only getting 30. I'm going to go with C. Because they were going to have to owe me so much money. They were going to have to owe me too much. It would have been a masterpiece situation. Mm. It's like, yeah, we don't want to cut them checks. That's that's a lot of money. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to, it could possibly cripple the record label. If we have to pay this young man, if we keep making more of his stuff that is selling so well, and he's getting 70% and we're only getting 30 we might need a loan just to make sure we can cover our bill with him. Like we might have to get on terms with him and tell him, could we give you 20% today? Maybe wait a month, give you another payment, maybe wait a couple months and we give you the rest. So it was a lesson learned where even if you got a great deal, even if you're selling well, that alone might bite you in the ass because they can turn around and waste that same energy on somebody that's getting, let's just say 10% and you're getting 90. Fuck yeah. <laughs> if I was them, I'd have been like, man, cancel Chingo Bling shit. We ain't paying him his 70%. Get that just, uh, what's the word? Shelve it. Yeah, yeah. Shelve it. Uh, I'm sure they recouped like instantly. Even though the papers, you know, you got the interesting accounting. You know, I don't want to, slander make accusations allegedly allegedly but if you have another artist who you're getting 90 percent hypothetically and they're only getting 10 fuck yeah rape them rape the shit out of them promote them blow them up pay for the video make more copies make sure they got a corner display uh and that's an example of like how perception is like oh chingo flopped this guy's a star Mm. really it's he had a shitty deal they made more money off him. It just was more incentive. So I learned that when you do deals with people like that, in hindsight, I, sometimes I go back and be like, "What if I? What if I had called them and say, hey, um, I noticed that they're not able to order. Is it about the percentage? If so, let's maybe uh, renegotiate the terms. You know, maybe we do 50-50. Yeah, let's meet in the middle. Would that wet your whistle a little yeah. bit? <laughs> Can you get your beak wet there? Yeah. Can you think get your beak wet 50%? Who knows? That probably would have still been like, ah, man, we're not really trying to partner with you. Mm-hmm. 
we said we did because I still walk away with the intellectual property. I still walk away with the masters. It's really, I was raping them yeah. <laughs> contractually. My deal was too good. I even took out some shit called a courtesy clause. And now this is for everyone that tuned in to the very end and you're interested in some of this behind the scenes music shit. This is interesting. I took out the thing about the courtesy clause, which is, the way it was explained to me, the reason, the reason I took it out, when Little John was in a legal dispute with TVT Records, which is now defunct, uh, Pitbull was signed to them too. They were both trapped in that. And thankfully, they went out of business, and therefore, Little John and Pitbull were able to blow up. So when Little John was owed millions of dollars for selling millions of copies, the way they were starving him out and smoking him out of his foxhole was basically all right john you and your lawyers are saying we owe you some money eh, all right debatable let's do this why don't you turn in another album and we'll give you an advance for that album or what or something like that where it's like uh little john was like no you still owe me for the last album you're just you're just bird feeding me you're just kind of like paying me with my own money and they also know that if it turns into a litigation, if it turns into law lawsuits, they're going to fund their legal team with Little John's money. So it's going to become big bank, take little bank. Mm -hmm. You're fucked because the way the distributor works is the money got to flow through them and then it trickles down to the artist. So what Little John did is, all right, fuck it. I know how to produce. I'm going to go make hits for Sierra and Petey Pablo and I'm just going to start blowing up other artists by making beats and I could still live. So the courtesy clause, which he had in his contract basically was this. Okay. You can go produce whatever the hell you want. The minute that label tries to release it, we're going to say we did not approve. Uh, it's not going to say little John appears courtesy of TVT records, meaning we're not going to sign off on it. We're going to starve you out, smoke you out. We have all the leverage. We have your money. You can't sue us because we have your money for lawyers. So what did I do? I want to own my masters. I want 70%. You can get 30% distribution fee. So it's a P and D pressing and distribution. Y'all press it up. Uh, obviously my advance, my recording budget and a marketing budget and, um, and no courtesy clause. So the courtesy clause was like the last thing. Cause I was just like, I really don't want to sign to nobody, man. Mm -hmm. They're like, we already gave you this, 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 this. All right, well, one last thing. Can you take the courtesy clause out? Just so that I wouldn't end up in a Little John situation right. where you're the distributor, you're holding out my money, and then I can't go do nothing else because you'll hit me with the courtesy clause. And the dude stepped out of the Grammys, um, the CEO, and uh, he's like, hey, man, are we partners yet? And I was like, hey, man, I need you to take that courtesy clause out. He's like, fuck. You know? So I probably got labeled difficult to work with. <laughs> But they took it out, and uh, I still own it. And uh, I was listening to it in the car on the way to Dallas, and I was like, hmm, a lot of this stuff still kind of holds up. Like, it's not, doesn't sound really dated or nothing. You know, yeah. I was like, I could, if this was new, I was like, man, I could probably put this shit out today. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Versace Mariachi, Black Friday. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a good intro to this series, man. Uh, if I don't know if you can also think about it as the episodes go on, but if it turns into its own thing where it's just another path that you use your platform for, where the you, maybe you have a podcast that's more free form, or this becomes its own free form type of politically driven podcast, totally up to you. But what you think and what the response is, mm -hmm. but it's cool, it's fun to hear you expand on that. Well, you're, you're the man for the job, um, you know. Your, your understanding and your ability to like guide the conversation is great because if it was like, let's just say it was me, Marisol, yeah. she's probably busy catching heat on her comments. So <laughs> she's going to come at it. She's too close to the issue. Sure. She's looking at it through like a different, like, I can't stand these motherfuckers. They're being disrespectful and how yeah. dare they and, you know, stuff like that. So I have a really good feeling about this. Hopefully people have an open mind. Hopefully some of this shit makes sense and it can kind of like explain as to like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're really taken aback with Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. How the fuck could you be brown and a Nazi with your white Tino privilege and your anti this, anti that? But 
I did my research and I came to the realization that for the purposes of my country, my family, my community, and my people, believe it or not, I feel like Trump is a better option. I feel that he earned, believe it or not, four more years. I do not believe Joe Biden is good. I feel like he did he did his 47 years. He was a public servant for a long time. Maybe it's time for him to retire and go off into the sunset. And it's a very interesting predicament that Joe Biden is in. He's in this limbo where he's either A, going to retire, or B, be the leader of the free world. When is the last time somebody was in that position? Like, hey, man, did you get that job? Yeah, I don't know, man. So I don't know if I'm going to just be retired (laughs) or be the leader of the fucking free world. Or be labeled incapable of your position. So that Kamala could take over. And that's another thing that people don't. Dude, I saw this meme. It said Monopoly, Kamala Harris edition. Ooh. What do you think all the little squares were? Uh, Jail cells? <laughs> it was the go to jail man. Yeah. That's in the corner. Ding, ding, ding. But, but it was go to jail, go to jail, go to jail, go to jail. <laughs> the whole board. <laughs> it don't matter where you land, your bitch ass going to jail. Oh, that's hilarious. It, it, people, don't, people don't understand. They, they just think that she wore Timberlands. She's, you know, she's like an Indian American, Jamaican, black female. And, and even though she called Biden a racist to his, and a me to her, I believe his accusers. Yeah, what happened to believe all women? Yeah, not, not oh, what's her name? Uh, Aly- Alyssa Milano is a big, big, big Biden supporter. And she was also the one, Rose McGowan called her out because she co opted the whole Me Too movement. She like ran with that wave. Of me too, me too, me too. Believe all women, believe all women. Uh, fuck James Kavanaugh and his Supreme Court seat. He's a fucking me tooer. Brett Kavanaugh. A uh, Brett Kavanaugh. And then, thank you. And then Joe Biden gets a, a me too accusation by Tara, uh, Tara Reid. And they're like, yeah, believe all women except for her. <laughs> and it's like, Alyssa Milano, come the fuck Damn. on. If you're going to be Miss Me Too, Me Too, believe all women, believe all women. And you trying to be go Biden, go Biden, go Biden. And he got caught with a Me Too. And now that's how you put yourself in a funny position when you choose sides like that. So I don't know if Hollywood is Babylon. I don't know if that shit is all fucking sin. I don't know if it's, I don't know. Because I just did a voiceover audition for a cartoon that's uh, in production. So I'm not going to talk too much shit (laughs) about Hollywood. (laughs) But. The hypocrisy. I I don't know if it's my fucking Mexicanness. I can't stand lying ass, fake, two fucking two face, hypocrite, lie to your face, fake fucking news. Like I, I literally said in the Periscope, I was like, I kind of damn near empathize with Donald Trump. I was like, once you kind of like switch how you view the world, once you saw the bleach thing went real and the and the fake uh, Nazis and all this shit, the quid pro quo and the Russia, Russia, Russia. Once you start putting all the pieces together, then you start to be like, man, this dude lost money taking this job, donates his salary, gets accused of every fucking thing you could think of. They just shitting on this man. As soon as he wakes up, boy, they got a headline on you every day. And all he's really trying to do is bring jobs back. Put America first. End these wars. America first. We're getting out of all these shitty deals. Uh, We're going to make China, hold China accountable. You're you're not going to be raping us with how you played. You don't play fair in terms of like uh, the taxes and the tariffs and the, you know, the trade and and how all the jobs went over there and and how they get to pollute and we get overregulated and how we're hurting our economy. All this crap. The, not to mention the plague, the, the COVID and all that shit. When you, when you put all that together and then you see that Biden is, when you see that compilation of Biden just being like, oh, China did, we need to raise China up and China's great and China didn't eat our lunch. They're a partner. We need allies and China this, China. I'm like, God damn, Joe, who are you? Who are you? Who, who are you with, Joe? Come on, man. And this is, come on, man. <laughs> and this is the shit that I was saying on my two and a half hour Periscope. Which nobody probably is going to listen to because they just want to hear the little snippets. 
So we had to go make our own snippets. Yeah. That was part of our little fucking comeback. It's like, all right, you want to take them little pieces? Bet. You know, I we my boy Frank, he just picked a bunch of random parts, made it like 18 minutes so that hopefully people can watch some of it. And hopefully I can make some sense. And hopefully I don't look like a Nazi. But sure enough, all the comments. Fuck you. Turn your back on the raza. <laughs> vendido. Fucking coconut. Sell out. Uh blah 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 and it's like man when y'all are ready to have when y'all are ready to sit at the adult table because all that other shit that's for the kids table like orange man bad sit at the kids table with that bullshit not this year though thanksgiving's canceled remember (laughs) hey that's what y'all voted for too (laughs) Are they really trying to do that? Yeah, certain cities. Certain cities are like, we advise you not to have Thanksgiving. If you must or if you do, limit it to less than 10 people at your house. How did y'all fall for this? How did y'all let the government tell you how many people you could have in your house? They're using the pandemic as an excuse for everything to how you must mail in your ballot. They're using it for everything. You can't do a, a, a rally as you're campaigning for the president. You can't rally. You you could protest some shit, but you can't rally. You can't vote in person. Can't go to you church. Can't, can't gather. You can't go to church. It really is a bunch of neo-Marxist stuff because that's all the stuff that they attack. The nuclear family, uh, freedom of religion, uh, so on. And they want to be all up in your mix. Here's another thing. I'll, I'll probably just end it with this. Um, a Jewish person that I've worked with in the past found it bizarre that I'm a grown ass man and I could think for myself. They found all this chingle bling Trump stuff. Bizarre, Hmm. bizarre quote, bizarre. So my thought is, are you aware of the amount of Jewish support that Trump has, especially in New York city? What do you call them? Are they bizarre? Are they sellouts? How do you see them? Because they think differently than you. Mm-hmm. Right, because a lot of these, a lot of these uh, Latino platforms, they 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 preach multicultural and diversity, multi diversity Latino. Orale, hey, we're gonna post a meme for you, essay. They preach that, but they don't want diversity in thought. They want you to just think the same, think like them. They'll promote diversity. Yes, Latinx, Latinx, his, her, they, Latinx, diversity, orale. But don't think different. Don't don't stay in line. Comply. Well, the reason I, I'm, I speculate the reason Trump has so much support from the Jewish community in New York is they've been treated very badly by the Democrat mayor and the Democrat governor, borderline picking on them to the point to where it's reminiscent of some shit they had to go through in the past. So, for example. All up, there's footage of like them trying to them just being in their house, maybe kind of like Latinos, like like Luisa, my babysitter. Boy, she got it's you know a couple of her daughters and some of their husbands and her son and his wife and then all their kids and shit. So right there, you got ten people. Yeah, that's already like illegal in New York. <laughs> They're already Jewish, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like they having a Jewish party, damn near. So what happened with a lot of the Jewish folk in New York is De Blasio was picking on them. I think uh, Governor Cuomo was holding up pictures of an old Jewish wedding, like from like years ago, like five, six, seven, eight years ago, uh, holding up the picture, basically being like, look, at this is how they gather. This is what they do. This is why our numbers are so high. No, bitch, it's because you sent people with COVID back to the old folks' homes. That's why y'all's numbers are so high, bitch-ass Cuomo. His daddy was the governor, and his brother's on CNN, and he's still a hoe. Uh, so, yeah, that's why so many Jewish people were like pro-Trump because there's footage of cops all up in their door. Hey, we're here because uh, somebody parked wrong and how many people in your house? Whoa, 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 what you coming in here for, man? What you want? Man, how many people y'all got in the house? It's all footage like, Damn. Well, well, we're here because... And it's like, that rubs people the wrong way, especially if, especially if like their culture went through some shit where motherfuckers were... Yeah. How many people in your house? Yeah. And keeping lists and 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 all this fucking weird totalitarian shit. And one of the keys to persuasion, you can't make a motherfucker denounce his country overnight. Yeah. 
You can't make a motherfucker hate his country overnight. It's always a small ask at first. And um, I'm reading, uh, what book is that? Oh, it's a book about persuasion. Hmm. It's called Influence. And the dude that wrote it has been hired by many presidential campaigns to help come up with slogans and, hmm. and, and things like dark. It was a very dark speech at Mount Rushmore. It was a dark, dark device because the word dark is a persuasive tool to allow the viewer to fill in the blank to what they think is scary and dark. Because for the time we're kids, we're afraid of the dark. Kukui in the dark. Where's the monstro? Under, under the bed in the dark, in the closet in the dark. So the Democrats use that shit as a talking point. But I'm reading a book called Influence by Homeboy. And he, he's talking about how in these Chinese prison camps, they had some American uh, captives. I know all these words I'm saying, I, my shit going to get flagged on YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, I'm on a list. I, there's a couple of motherfuckers got me on a list anyway. So in these Chinese prison camps, they wouldn't get people to denounce America right away. They start off with a small ask. They'd be like, hey, um... Would you agree with this phrase that um, America isn't perfect? And he'd be like, well, well, I mean, I mean, I love my country, but I mean, nothing's perfect. I mean, I, I guess. Okay, no, that's fine. Get back in your cell. You're good. You're good. That's good for today. You're good. A week later or something. Hey, remember that stuff we were talking about? America not being perfect? Yeah, why? What's up? You think maybe you come up with like maybe a, a list, maybe like three things that America can work on to improve, just to improve, right? There's always room for improvement. Oh, that's a good point. You know, nothing's perfect. And there's always room for improvement. Mm, I guess I could come up with something. Makes a little list of three things. Before you know it, they're reading this list in front of the other prisoners. They've created division. Uh, he denounced his country. Y'all should too. Yada, yada, so on and so forth. To where the way persuasion works is sometimes you got to just get your foot in the door. You know, comply. I'm not saying masks were a way. Right. But, you know, for you know, you got a little curfew, you know, because y'all know Corona don't be out after 10. <laughs> Unless uh, you're protesting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you open up a can of worms, man. <laughs> but hopefully I made some sense to some people. And um, and like I said, we're going to be vindicated because the minute this shit gets reversed, you know, these they finish counting these votes or whatever the fuck happens, whether he wins or not. I'm going to be vindicated because. I'm no longer beholden to a community that's like wishy-washy and, and, and inconsistent with yeah, me. Yeah. You know, I'm no longer limited. So sometimes you got to shake the box and the disloyal, the closed minded, the ignorant, because the amount of hate, I get it. People hate Trump. They hate him that much that they will literally dispose of me without thinking. Yeah. Mr. They can't deport us. Man, I've been following you for all these years. But I hate Trump that much that I would just crumble you up and throw you in the trash and cancel you without thinking. But you can't cancel the goat. <laughs> can't when be canceled. When you're the greatest of all time, it's kind of tricky to cancel. That's right. Especially when you're a uh, red-blooded American, alpha male, with high serotonin levels. <laughs> <laughs> just name them all. Got land, got guns. Yeah, no, I'm talking about no, shit. No, to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, shit. Hey, we still sing the Pledge of Allegiance over here, baby. And if we got to secede, we shall secede. Yeah, they chill. Oh, well. All right, man. Well, unless, because uh, I, I might have overdid it on this one. No, nah, no, nah, this is a good uh, good <laughs> precursor to everything that's going to come. Yeah, set the table. Yeah, everyone's put it all be, out there. Everyone's going to be like, man, I, I don't know where he was going with the defund the police shit, but I'm, I can't wait to hear that that angle. Of how that's a fucking trick. I mean, everything. There's there's at least two dozen bullet points in what we talked about today that you hear perpetuated in the mainstream media on the daily that is just not the case. Even the whole thing about, like, Trump doesn't believe in science. It's like, okay, he had Dr. Fauci, he had Dr. Burks, and probably a lot of other experts who were advising him, and he pretty much did all of that shit. The only thing that he did on his own that wasn't maybe from them was close the airports coming from Wuhan. Fauci and them were like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. Really, bitch? Because that's where it is, and that's where it's coming from. So you can call me xenophobic if you want, and that's what they did. Typical Trump behavior, anti-Asian xenophobe. He's doing an Asian ban now. It's like, no, bitch, we got the fuck, dude. 
I was hearing about this Corona stuff the minute it was brewing in China because Scott Adams, who I was listening to, he was like, he was mentioning, I don't know what episode it was, but it was probably easily December, January or something like that, where he's like, oh, you're hearing about this uh, novel COVID-19 coronavirus that mm. uh, they're having, uh, it's some kind of <clears throat> virus, it's in China, so far it's contained. And that's when I started seeing all the disinformation and misinformation, because in one episode he would be like, well, apparently it doesn't it doesn't spread like human to human, person to person. Right. Apparently they've got it under control. Psych. We just buying time to fuck over the world. That's all they were doing. And then I remember we had a show in Kansas City, and then we flew home. I can't remember if this was late January. It's the it's the day that uh, all the water pipes on the east side, some water thing, yeah, fucked up, and everyone was going to buy water. So I told Marisol, I said, hey, babe, because uh, when we landed, Starbucks, all these people were like, sorry, y'all, we closed, you know, the water or some shit. Mm. Papa's Burger, you couldn't get nothing. We can't cook. So we get home, we go to Whole Foods and some shit to get some water. And I, I said, hey, let's get a whole bunch of Purell and some other shit. Because this dude I listened to, he said that this virus is coming. And before you know it, it's going to be harder to get, you know, some of these water and Purell. And all. It's going to be like. People are going to be hoarding it. Sure enough, we we still have it. Uh, there, that one. Yeah. That big-ass Purell, that's literally from uh, from that time. And um, and so I've been keeping track of the shit for, all the way from masks don't work, psych, masks do work. Sorry we had to lie to y'all. It's just that we didn't want y'all hogging up all the PPE. All that shit. I've been peeping all that shit. The fucking how China kept it from spreading from Wuhan to the rest of their country, but they were letting people leave Wuhan to Italy and Europe and fly out, fly out. I'm going to throw this. Fly out, fly out, fly out. Well, what do we know, right? Yeah, what the fuck do we're I know? We're just doing our independent research. But the CDC, Chingo. The, the World, World Health, Health Organization. Organization. <laughs> just updated their website. We have to stay in before 10. Uh. Let's sign off. <clears throat> All right, that was good, ladies and gentlemen. Producer Rob and Chingo Bling. Yeah, man, good. Uh, good to be doing this again with you. How often do you really think you'll commit to doing the series? <sighs> well, I'm down, man. You down? I'm down. down for you, the get down? I'm down. You you tell me if you if. I mean, I don't know if you want to go based off feedback. Uh, I mean, right now it is one of those things where it's like, you might want to do three a week. Yeah, I'm totally down. Okay, uh, so. Everyone listening, please give us your feedback. If you heard it all the way to the end, I didn't chew your ear off. Give us your feedback. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review. If you tell me, hey, go fuck yourself, Chingo. You're an idiot. You you make no sense. Tell me so I can work on my communication skills and my persuasion skills. Yeah, leave it in the comment section because uh, I'm going to make a shit ton of clips out of all this. Oh, man. Can't wait. Um, put it in the DMs, obviously, what did he said. And if it turns into its own show because the demand for it is there, then it turns into its own show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because initially, Rob, he was like, "Do you want to? Do you want to have what did he said over here?" And then like fucking red pill tamales or the Mexican American podcast, whatever, over here, what's more like political and shit. Yeah. Or and I was like, ah, it'd probably be easier to just put it on this. We already have subscribers. Yeah. So let us know, because if uh, you all unsubscribe, then we know it needs to be its own feed because it's not the right audience. Or if you tell your friends and more subscribers come, then it might be its own show. Yeah, but either way, give us feedback. If if it's like, Chingo, you fucking lost it. You're an idiot. Or eh, some of the shit makes sense. I'm curious to see where you're going with this. Yeah. And uh, maybe the, the suggestion I would make is watch The Social Dilemma if you haven't. And then some of the stuff that we talk about will make sense as far as what you see, what populates when you Google stuff, what populates when you search, you know, whatever online or ads you might see. And uh, yeah. Yeah, because he's talking about the algorithm that uh, a lot of these all, all these tech services use. And what happens is we end up in our own little news silos, our own little bubbles, our echo where, chambers, echo chamber where you're only see seeing your side. And it happens to both the left and the right. So I made sure to, st first of all, if you're on the right, you still hear all the news from the left yeah. because, because you can't avoid it. CNN is on every fucking airport, everywhere you go, they got CNN on and you know, you can't help but hear all the rumors, all the fake news, all the hoaxes, Ugh, Chingo, Biden won, get over it. It's like, okay, 
uh, I know why you're saying that because the newspaper said that, but you do know that they're still counting shit, suing each other. No matter who won, I already knew it was going to be highly contested. I already knew the shit might end up going to the Supreme Court. But what the fuck do I know? Yeah, one, the media doesn't elect the president. And two, there's no such thing as the office of the president-elect. That's also he, very made up. He's the president of the basement. <laughs> they use that backdrop. It's That's not true. There's not an office of the president-elect. Are they saying he has the uh, an office? office of the president-elect? Like yeah. the position? Yeah. Or he's at the office of the, president-elect? His, his podium and the backdrop that he does the last few speeches all say pres- office of the president-elect. That's not a real thing. Bro. How fucking stupid do you think we are? I mean, I get it, man. You know what I'm saying? I get it. A lot of these youngsters are in these universities where they're paying all this money to get indoctrinated. Like, dude, when I was in college, the sociology uh, professor, uh, Dr. Gentry, she was trying to recruit me to switch over to sociology bad just because... You know, I had the right answer sometimes. Like she would say, based on the definition of a gang, what is the largest gang in America? And I'm like, "Mm, well, I I can tell all these white kids in this class are not going to say the police. But based on the definition she gave, I think that's the answer she wants. (laughs) The police. Boy, them white kids were like, huh? And she taught us about the um, the crime bill. uh, Coincidentally, this is a oh, Mr. Biden's crime bill. Yes, she. She was, okay. which we could expand upon in a whole episode. I know, I know, <laughs> but I'm gonna just end it with this. That's okay, the third okay. time I'm telling y'all bye. <laughs> so this sociology professor, the sociology 101 class, Dr. Gentry, Trinity University. Obviously, if you're a socialist, I mean a sociology. A lot of these people are very like hippie left. Um, probably have some neo-Marxist views, which I believe Karl Marx was in our fucking textbook. But anyway. She says cocaine and crack are pharmaceutically the same, chemically identical. She said the only difference is, or some of the differences are cocaine, it's kind of like drinking a beer, whereas crack is like you taking a shot of liquor. That's how she would explain it. It's concentrated. It hits your lungs. It's going to affect you a little bit differently. And then she made everyone in the class fill out a survey. It was anonymous. So it's. You had to do a scale where it's like uh, a list of drugs. Uh, a number one on the drug is like, I would never do it. A five is like, I've done it and I'm down to do it again type of thing. So she collected all the papers. She's like, it's interesting how in this class, a lot of y'all are very open to cocaine, have either done it or are down to do it. And y'all shy away from crack and would never do it. She says they're pharma- pharmaceutically the same. And then she says there is a law. Where if you get caught with 10 times the amount, you know, you have 10 times, like you have a shit ton of shit ton of cocaine versus a little bit of crack, they'll give you the same amount of time. She's like, it just takes a little bit of crack. And then we're like, what? Why? If it's pharmaceutically the same, chemically the same. She's like, because they knew who sold which drug, who did which drug. The mm. crack was more popular in the hood, mm-hmm. you know. In the 80s and shit, like in New York, everybody was getting that crack money in the 80s because Giuliani wasn't around yet. They had already defunded their police. There weren't enough cops to regulate the crack sales. So good old Joe Biden came up with the law, the crack laws or whatever they call them. And it it it, it tore up all those families. I mean, maybe he at the time, maybe he thought it was the only way. But basically, it, it tore up all those families like threw a bunch of people in jail. It probably created a generational curse for like the kids having to grow up and come up in this environment with shitty education. I can't wait to do the education. No father. Yeah, Yeah, it's fucked up. And that's the guy y'all voted for. Anyway, thank y'all for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.